pour my spirit out on all flesh. Yes. Act like it. Hallelujah. Yes. It's not easy for me to do this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where'd you go today? I was some crazy woman. That's right. I'm crazy about Jesus. Yes. I don't really like that word. But I asked him one day, help me to know you more. Help me to understand your ways. He said, you, you said our ways are not your ways. Let him light your candle, honey. It'll search out all the secret parts. All the hidden areas, it'll search it out. The light, the revelation will search out the truth of who God is and what God wants to do. Hallelujah. God is going to be in everybody's pocketbook. From the presidential office down to the man on the street that's panhandling. God is going to get our attention. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I thought I didn't know any Hebrew, and God gave me some Hebrew. Last night, he know he named my toe Unama and Shemada King Nangaha. How pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together. He named my toe Unama and Shemada King Nangaha. He named my toe, he made my toe. Lie, 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 He made my toe, he made my toe. La 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 la. He made my toe, not mine. Shiver the king, gun, gun, gun. He made my toe, not mine. Shiver the king, gun, gun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he said it was like oil running down. Anointed by the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm seeing angels that are moving all around this room, twirling and they're serving you. The food from heaven right now, I'm seeing a vision of it. Manna! That we have not tasted of before. Manna! Hobo Shadabanda. I'm telling you, my voice got so low this week, I was broken. I sounded like a frog in my house praying. Oh, oh, It's down there. It's going to come out. God, there's a shout that's going to come out. There's an explosion in the spirit that's going to come out. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
singing the flowers of willing, but there's the sound of the voice of the turtle dove, the sound of the voice of the spirit in the
a cord that would reach forever. He's extending it to us this morning. There's no distance in God. No distance. Oh, that I might know Him. That I might know Him. Oh, that I might share Him. Oh, He's all I need.
it was so real that I got even went to the bathrooms and pulled the curtains back, thinking perhaps somebody had left me a pot of lilies. And I remember that scripture says where he grazes amongst the lilies. He's the lily of the valley. I thought, oh, could I find somebody to make me a fragrance like that? I really felt that, the smell, the presence of the Lord. Your praise is like oil and myrrh and frankincense. It's death, burial, and resurrection. I said, 
Rachel, you're about to take her home, aren't you, Lord? I believe that's what it is. You're about to take her home. Nobody has told me anything, but I feel like you want to take her home. I got a call the next day asking my permission to pull the stopper to take her home. The very next day. I didn't feel any sorrow. I didn't cry because I had the mind of the Lord. So let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. He'll tell you things that are to come that we need to know. We're living in the hour where we need to know what is taking place that we can prepare our schedules, our lives, our steps for this day because we have no promise of tomorrow. We just need to empty out, get a big Holy Ghost broom and sweep out. Make room for the glory of the Lord. For His presence, for His accommodations of everything. Hallelujah. I've had the Lord to just show me, you know, things to eat because when you're by yourself, it's hard to fix without having leftovers. But I've had the Lord to drop right in my spirit what to do more than once. In fact, he let me see what to put on in the closet without going and wondering. I don't want you to wonder. We're not in the wilderness anymore. We're on the mountaintop. Right at hand. 
at the right moment. He knows how to put all the dots together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things flow. I'm sitting and I'm still looking at the rugged amazement. How did this get in my house? Are you listening? Suddenly things begin to come together, about a half a dozen things. Suddenly, in, in 24 hours. I mean, I needed miracles. I needed God to do something supernatural. Well, he's the supernatural God. Yeah. He's got angels everywhere. I want to give some of you new names, heavenly names. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so if somebody asks you what's going on here, well, it's one of those streams. Yeah. Make them come and find out what the streams are about. Yeah. It's one of those streams that make glad. And live in this realm, talk in this realm, speak in this realm. Hallelujah. So somebody else came along, and they said it could be just on the word that they hear from God. That they, you're gonna, God doesn't give words, just give us revelation. He's given us understanding with it. He just doesn't give words because he wants you to know information. He's got, he's, it's, it's booked with other things. And so somebody else came along. This, this all happened this week while I haven't been able, I'm not very mobile. And somebody else came along and God spoke a word about my life and my calling. It went along with the dream that she had. She had to, a sister, Rachel Hands, had the dream two years ago and suddenly I got it on my telephone. It's for today. God did let it release it until now. So this friend in another state had a word from the Lord that went with your dream here. See, there's no distance in God. And on the merit of the word, she calls her mother and said, I think we should bless Sister Ruth. God give her more dreams. More dreams. More dreams. More dreams. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. You better get happy with me because you might be the person I'm about to bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not for me, it's to bless others. Do we have the air on in here? Do you want to go on? I think we better. We're fanning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, God's not limited. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. He's not limited to what he can do. Glory to God. God gave me my own dentist, my own mechanic, and my own plumber, and my own builder at one time. And then he moved me somewhere else. So if I tell you about my plumbers and my builders, you need to pray your own men. Don't get upset with me. It, 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 it takes following that path. That Remember that yellow brick road? What's her name? Alice in Wonderland or wherever she was. What was it? Dorothy in Wonderland. Well, I'm Ruth in Heaven's Land. I'm a Ruth in Heaven's Land. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm believing for God to do something awesome. Yes. My pastor stood. He said, all right, I'm believing for $100,000 this summer. This was summer camp, 10 and a half weeks. Just as it started, he said, at the end of this week, I'm believing of this 10 and a half weeks of summer camp, I'm believing for God to give me a hundred thousand dollar check to send those that want to travel. It was only for those that had the mind of the Lord and the vision and the understanding to travel on a world trip. And in the eighth month, he stands up and he said, "Well, I declared it." And he said, "I'm standing with a check in my hand for a hundred thousand dollars." And he got a little. He said, "I don't think you heard what I said." And people got up and ran around the tabernacle. We got called into the office and wanted to know where did we want to go. They have the money to pay for it. God can afford you. We're not talking about money here. We're talking about we are King's children. And he's going to take care of us. He's not talking about being extravagant. He's talking about the kingdom. The kingdom. You understand? The kingdom. Hallelujah. With something he did this week, I, I just was in tears. It was just a little thing. 
But I needed the answer, and I saw him working for me just like that. And he hears your thoughts. Years, he said, before you call, I will answer. Come on. Before you were born, he said, I knew you. Come on. Before you were born, I had plans for you. Plans that you know not of. And so what you need to do is get you a book with a thousand pages in it and say, all right, what's the plan for today? Come on. And let and see the magnificent work of the Lord. You'll come in and say, Boy, I'm glad I got a bed and sleep in. Because he's going to use you. He's going to use the timing of heaven in your life to show you how the time clock of heaven works. It's like the lady Ruth needed $220,000. And I don't hear anybody else testifying about it, so I don't guess they have the testimony. She had $20 after she paid all of her bills at the end of preaching that summer. $20. That was enough to put gas in the car. That was when gas was 50 cents a gallon. Go to North Carolina. Take three girls with her. And, well, how are we going to eat? Well, she had enough to buy a bucket of chicken on the way. Okay. You got to see how God works. We, we got to know God's economy and how he works. And out of nowhere, a lady flies 1,500 miles. Came to her surroundings where it was chaos that morning. And she's talking. Listen, you brought the lady in right in her conversation. And she's talking. How much money do we need, Harold, to print this book? And he, you could hardly hear him say, it's her publisher, $20,000. And the lady that just showed up, I got $20,000. And she writes a check in a second. Wow. Nobody was clapping their hands and jumping up and down. <laughs> oh my, the Lord is in this place. I told this story, but I want you to get your imagination. The Lord said to me three days ago, let your imagination run away with you. Mm -hmm. And she said, Harold, this is wonderful. You have to have been in the room. A dog is barking, a baby is crying, and a law, the, the hall is lined up with people trying to see her, and I'm trying to fix her hair. And we're trying to pack her suitcase of three dresses. She said, it's wonderful, Harold. Now, how much do we need? Boy, she was following the Spirit. He said, probably 200000 And the lady said, I got 200000 And wrote a check. Remember the $20? It now had five zeros. The book. It's got printed in four languages in a moment. A moment of eternity. I'm just saying, God wants to do it, but you get in the bread line when He's giving it out. Come on. He said, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive others. Forgiveness is up and down the road, honey. Hallelujah. I remember a young man went to jail. He was a pastor. I'm not going into the story. But after 20 years, he called everybody he could think of getting forgiveness. Just minor things. Because he was hoping if was anything on his record, God would show mercy. Maybe God wants him to preach in jail. Who knows? Couldn't get us in there one way. He'll get us in another. I'm sorry, but God works differently than we work. We'll get over it. I don't have to have faith like Daniel and the Hebrew children. Come on. The king, the Bible says he didn't have music during the night. Evidently, he had so much fears and horrors. He had to have music all night long. The people are like that. they got to have a noise going on to blot out all that other stuff that's there. Bible says that the king didn't have any music and he was awake all night and he ran early the next morning. Oh, Daniel! Yes. Your God that you serve, as he kept you alive? He said, oh, king, don't be afraid. I'm okay. And the king ordered an edict that they had to serve Daniel's God. Come on. Are you listening? 
This is what the whole problem is today with Israel. And even with the, the aborted babies, it's all about God. You're going to yeah. see it. It's all about God. Yeah. Trying to do away with God. The gay one which can't birth children. It's all about no reproduction. It's all about God. Yeah. But we're going to honor God. How many of you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to honor Him in everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we lift up holy hands today. We know our help comes from you. We're stretching and reaching. We're stretching. We're extending ourselves. Lord Jesus, make us who you want us to be. We can see the fullness of the statue of the measure. The measure of the statue, the height, length, depth, and width. There's no ending of who you are, God, and what you can do. Lord, you're going to calm our appetites. You're going to warm our hearts. You're going to lighten our burdens. You said your yoke is easy. And you're going to show us the end from the beginning. That's what you want us to do is reach out. Because we've already read in the end, Lord, but we want to taste all that you have for us. Make us hungry. Hungry. Come on, say I'm hungry. Lord, give us a new passion. A new passion. How great is our God seem to be how great is our God somebody sing it. How great is our God? How great is our God? Seek to me how great is our God? How great How great is our God? How great
But God has given us the strength and the strength and the wherewithal and the knowledge to gain what we have. But we don't put it above God. He's the master and the builder of everything. And what I'm saying is that God is looking for people to love him with their whole heart. Everything that's within us. And I, I've just recently been through a lot of health issues. But I've had to learn to not beg God to heal me. And I'm suffering. And can't you see? I've learned not to say that. I've learned to thank him for what he's going to do. And if you don't do it, Lord, I'll still thank you. Hallelujah. You've got to have that thanksgiving that he's God and he knows what he's doing and he's in charge. And while I was going through horrible pain recently, horrible, I woke up early one morning and pain hit me and I thought, oh my goodness. And I'm drawing my breath in. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a kidney stone really. And I went, some of them stones need to be moved. And I said, oh, Jesus. And before I could say, please help me, I heard him say seven times, the cold is coming, the cold is coming, the cold is coming, the cold is coming. The divine nature is coming. Come on. It's that nature where the power of God is going to flow through us like a river. Come on, you've got to see this. It's a divine nature and it's a commitment to God. I'm the last one to leave this church. And, and Steve and Laurel, we were the last people to leave this church every Sunday. I'm not the pastor here. But I'm thinking it might be somebody that needs a little drink of water. Amen. You know what I'm saying? You might need a little of something. Hallelujah. So you got to know that God is always, always checking his list. I kept hearing that song. I said, Lord, this doesn't sound very spiritual. Santa Claus is coming to town. And I kept hearing that line. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. I thought, I said, oh, is that really you? I can't tell anybody about that. <laughs> to find out who's naughty or nice. I heard that for three Septembers right after the feast. And I thought, well, maybe I'm going to have a nice Christmas this year. And then Christmas would go by, and all of a sudden, the suddenly, on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound. Honey, it was a drop bag from heaven. I had a dream two nights ago about Jesse Duplantis and Benny Hinn and the Wahlberg guy. What's his name? Wahlberg. He's a movie star. What? There, there are two or three of them. Wallow. Wallow. No, not that's one, but Wahlberg. Movie star. Mark. Mark. Mark Wahlberg. Had him in one night. I had both dreams. And I thought Jesse DePlantis came to my house. And when he came in the door, a whole entourage of people came with him. And he was coming to show me all of this money he just got. It was bags of it, honey. Not a little bags. I guess people were coming to get some from him. And I thought, why is he coming to show me? Because God was telling me he was about to bless me. Come on. About to bless me. Come on, you got to get this. I'm just, I don't need to tell you this. This isn't important. Because listen, there's nothing worse than having a lot of money and never hearing the voice of the Lord. Or never experiencing his presence. It's terrible. You don't want to be in that place ever. Ever. Oh, it's awful. 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 You'll be glad to give him everything. House. Yes. Your hands, your arm, if it offends you, everything. But he was coming to show me all of this money. He had it in bags inside of bags. They were trash cans of money inside of bags. Overflowing. And then he was in my house with his wife. But there was something going on with Benny Hinn. He was kind of concerned. He heard a sound. And he kept saying to his wife, he said, what is that sound? It was like it was bothering him. It was a decimal with what God was doing. And it's too quiet. Some of you got to know when it's too quiet there's something going on. You got to, God doesn't have to tell you. You just suddenly know 
just like you know you don't feel good or something's burning on the stove. You just know it. Yeah. And I thought it's too quiet. What's going on? I ain't been able to sleep in the morning. But I know probably that he has discerned something and he hasn't shared the secret yet with fellow members and followers. Anybody watching on television? I don't have television anymore. I took it out. I'm taking that thing out of the bottle of God. I'm just taking it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then I saw Mark Wahlberg. And I thought he was doing a movie. Because the Lord told me to pray for movie stars, but the only one I know. Because I don't, I don't go, I don't go to the movies. I haven't in 50 years except to see The Passion of Christ and that one about Hillary Clinton, which I went to sleep in. <laughs> Remember, I went to sleep. <laughs> well, they left the chairs out like beds in the movies now. It's crazy. Oh, no. Anyway, I thought he was doing a movie somewhere, and he got attacked. I don't know if it was from Satan or from a person from another country, and he he was in a bed in the hospital room and I went in to see him. I said, you got beat up, didn't you? I saw him, he had bruises and marks all over him. I don't know if this is going to happen to him, but I know what I saw because I'm a dreamer and the Lord told me I was a dreamer years ago. He said, I'm going to make you like Joseph. And you know what goes with Joseph? The blessings that went over the wall. Come on. Ask God who you're like in the Bible. Come on, get the character of it. See what God wants to tell you. Maybe you're like Paul. I told him I wanted to be like Paul to change my mind. I got shipwrecked too much. I really did. I told him I wanted, I wanted a journey like Paul. I went through the Bible with my fingers and I changed my mind. I don't, I don't want to go down that hole anymore. Anyway, put your hands up. Now, Lord, I just thank you that you're going to give them their new name. You said you had a new name. New name, new character, new spirit, new personality, a new nightness. God, I thank you for sharing your secrets unto them. Yes. Show them what's in the news. Lord, we're reaching beyond this hemisphere yes. into your sphere of influence and how you work in the earth and what you're doing. Amen. Lord, it's all for the kingdom's sake. It's not names, but it's your name that we're exalted. Your name we're lifting up. It's your name, Lord. We've met the king, not just the president, the king of all. Hallelujah. Have they met the king yet? They talk about these wonderful experiences. Have they met you? Glory to God. You're our majesty. You're our majesty. You're our majesty. Even as you told Jack Hayford if he'd write a song for you, you'd heal his wife of cancer and you did it. Lord, you know what we need, every one of us. Now, Lord, let that flow of your beauty run through us. Oh, majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus, be glory, honor, and praise, majesty.
Hallelujah. The lady that hosted us, I told her, I said, I don't want you to give me an offering. I don't want an offering. Please. I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to come over and minister to you. And I got a call. I didn't get a call. Someone who with me got a call from her. And she does under the radar work. She's a chef. She was a chef for um, John, uh, Jan and Paul Crouch for 10 years. She told me she got paid well. But she's working for these people, I think, four days a week. She goes over about 1 o'clock in the day and she preps for the next day, prepares their food. And she said right after we left, they called her and gave her $200,000 for her retirement. Wow. Nice. This, I'm telling you what God is going to do. Nice. I mean, she cooked for us. Oh, honey, we had the most wonderful breakfast. Oh, it was fruit, <laughs> purple <laughs> eggs. Yeah. Then she did steak. Or she made the best lasagna I've ever tasted. Wow. And my own sweet. We had everything we needed, people to come in and play. She had a place right there in Alexandria. It looked like a Georgetown mansion. She's renting it. She used to live here, and she and her husband bust two to three hundred children to church every Sunday morning. Wow. I gave her a word. She came to my glory class twenty-two years ago. She was going to run for Congress. She actually ran. Her name is Eve. I don't know her last name. I'll think of it in a minute. But she ran for Congress, but she didn't win, but God got her involved with politics. And her daughter worked for President Trump. I'm just telling you these things. She had pictures up in her house of Bush and dignitaries. But here she is cooking, taking care of us, going over cooking for these people four nights a week. And people come in from all over the world. You can get there. It's $50 a night, and they give you two meals a day plus your bed. Very nice. And she cooks for them. I mean, God has set up something there. It's right at the door of the Capitol, near the David's tent that's there. Okay. She's 69 years old, and she works like a woman about 35. Oh, amen. God has blessed her. But, you know, she works the job to help keep the house going because it's not enough. It's quite expensive. She rents it. It's six bedrooms, and so you know it's large. I'm just telling you what the Lord did while we were in Washington. It was just one miracle after another. It was very timely. Even my wardrobe, when I got ready to go, the Lord said, get yourself a velvet coat. Now listen to this. And Rachel gets online and finds it for half price, $40. The coat went with everything. Ladies, I didn't have to put another jacket on, another coat on, because it was colder there than it was here. See how God worked it? The coat was lightweight. And it had medallions on the cuffs. It was just nice. I'm talking about the wardrobe. I only had to take a couple of dresses, you know, a couple of skirts and blouses, and that was it for six days. I'm just telling you, God's glory is going to be in everything. Every meal that's cooked, every wardrobe, everything that you do, you're going to see the stamp of His glory, the knowledge of His glory. And how it operates. This is what I'm telling you. It's the operation. He didn't say the glory. The knowledge. The knowledge of his glory will be in the earth as the water discovers the sea. There will be a depth of it that you cannot measure. You won't be able to measure it on either side. Just be open to it and yield to it and see what God will do.